So the new M4 MacBook Pros are finally official and the big news is really to do with the base model. It's got a bevy of changes compared to the older M3 model and so let's delve in. Number one, much like the new iMac and Mac Mini, we finally have 16 gigs of RAM as standards for $15.99 with the base 14 inch. Thank you, Timothy, for blessing us with this. This is awesome news, especially since this model already came with 512 gigs of storage. And so I can now recommend this model to literally everyone. RAM, however, can be maxed out to 32 gigs if you wish, and you also get up to two terabytes of storage. The base model also gains a space black option from last year's M3 Pro and M3 Max models, and also it gains the additional port on the right side, because the M4 does have more Thunderbolt controllers. You also get access to the full fat M4 with the base model, so that's 10 CPU cores and 10 GPU cores for the base price, and it now supports two external displays, and so overall this is terrific value guys. Till the MacBook Air is updated with the M4 chipset, this will be my go-to MacBook recommendation. You know what else I'd recommend guys? Subscribing to this channel of course. I would greatly appreciate it and will bring you the latest about Apple right to subscription box, so please consider it. The button is below. Join the Saran by gang now. Anyways, for those who want more grunt, Apple also announced the M4 Pro and M4 Max MacBook Pros. Wow, that's a mouthful, but anyways, these machines are pretty much the same as the outgoing models. They even come in the same colors, but there are new chipsets inside. Sam 4 Pro offers 14 CPU cores and 20 GPU cores. You also get 24 gigs of RAM as standards, and that can be maxed out to 64 gigs if you wish. And you also get up to four terabytes of storage. And finally, M4 Max has a 16 core CPU and 40 GPU cores. You also get a max of 128 gigs of RAM, and you can also get eight terabytes of storage. Also Thunderbolt 5 is available on the M4 Pro and the M4 Max, the regular M4 still supports Thunderbolt 4. And just like the iMac, the MacBooks also get a 12 megapixel center stage camera and also the option to get a nano texture coating. You can pre-order these machines right now and they ship next week. So let me know guys in the comments, which MacBook Pro configuration are you gonna be buying? If you're wondering about the changes that Apple announced with the iMac and Mac mini a few days ago, here's a quick summary for you guys. And FYI, my clothes, my beard and my hairstyle may change but gloss over that, okay? So beginning with the iMac, the big news is the M4 chipset, which is not really brand new because we saw it a few months ago with the iPad Pros, but now it's in a Mac, which is very cool. And obviously this is a decent upgrade over the M3. Here are the benchmarks or the specs. It's this amount better than the M3, so yay. But jokes aside, actually is a decent upgrade over the M3 because it's based on the TSMC N3 process, which is much more efficient. But that's not the big news of the day, guys. The groundbreaking change has to be 16 gigs of RAM as standard. I never thought this day would come, but Timothy has finally been gracious and has given us 16 gigs of RAM for the same price as standards. I can't believe it, guys. I'm about to faint in excitement because obviously this makes this new iMac much better value than the outgoing M3 version. You can now comfortably get the base model and not sell your kidney to upgrade the RAM. So that is very awesome news. Now, because 16 gigs is the standard, you can now get 32 gigs of RAM with the M4 chipset. That's a nice boost of M3, which supported a max of 24 gigs. And also you now get a new 12 megapixel center stage camera on the front. So this is the camera we see on iPads and also the studio display. And it means that of course, if you move around, the camera tracks you, which is very awesome. And you also get a desk view, which means you can now record your face and also an overhead shot of your desk at the same time. That is very neat. Though I do vaguely remember some quality issues with the studio display's front facing camera. So I do wonder how this compares to a traditional webcam on other Macs. But either way guys, I love myself some center stage and so I'm glad the iMac now has it. We also get a nano texture display option with the iMac for the first time. This is really not worth it for the high price they charge, but hey, if you have extra money to splurge on your new iMac purchase, you can now get this fancy texture. And finally, we have USB-C accessories at last. So yes, the keyboard, the trackpad, and the mouse now all charge via Type-C, that's awesome. Lightning is finally dead. And also the icing on the cake has to be Thunderbolt 4 supports with the actual iMac machine itself. However, that Thunderbolt 4 upgrade only applies to the higher end models. And actually, let's talk about the base model real quick because it does get 16 gigs of RAM as standard. That's awesome. But there is a storage upgrade. It's still 256 gigs at the base. 
That's fine to be honest because you can use external storage, whereas RAM is not upgradable down the line. Also, the base model does have a bin chip, so it's an 8 core CPU and an 8 core GPU, and also has less ports. But it does get the wide range of new colors the iMac offers because, yes, after being lazy with the M3 refresh, they finally gave us some new shades, and I must say the new orange and green are quite snazzy. Also, thank you, Apple, for not being extra lazy and actually giving us some new wallpapers. The new wallpaper actually spells out iMac, which is very nice. So, yes, thank you for giving us some visual changes. Now of course Apple's still shoving down Apple intelligence down our throats and that's really the main thing they're talking about with this iMac refresh but beside from that this is a pretty decent upgrade on the whole. It's definitely a lot more substantial than we expected and 16 gigs of RAM as standard is again a big upgrade and makes us much better value. Also it has actually got cheaper in the UK so it's £100 cheaper now with double the RAM. That's awesome news for us UK folks. But in the US, it's the same price. And now let's move on to the Mac Mini because guys, this thing is tiny. And it's kind of crazy to realize how much wasted space there used to be with the older model. But yeah, the new design is a radical change. And the leaks were right, it is about the same size as an Apple TV. Now, apart from the new design, there are some other changes to note. Number one, we have new chipsets. So the base model has M4, which has a 10 core CPU and a 10 core GPU, and also 16 gigs of RAM as standards. That's awesome news because, spoiler alert, the price is exactly the same. So yes, we have a new design, we have 16 gigs of RAM, all for the same 599 price tag, which is pretty insane and unheard of for Apple considering they usually increase the price with a redesign. And also remember, if you're in education, you can get this for less. And so 499 for this is a steal. Now, obviously, alongside the regular M4, we have the M4 Pro chipset. This offers a 14 core CPU, 20 GPU cores, and 24 gigs of RAM as standard. Though you can upgrade this to 36 gigs. And with the M4, that can be upgraded to 32 gigs. You also get a max of two terabytes of storage with the regular M4 and eight terabytes with the M4 Pro. And by the way, the M4 Pro, I believe, has actually gone up in price slightly. It's $13.99 compared to $12.99, which I believe was the price of the M2 Pro. But that's not too bad, especially when the base M4 is exactly the same price, which I still can't believe. Also, on top of all this, and despite the design being smaller, Apple's actually given us more ports. So with the base M4, you get three Thunderbolt 4 ports on the back and two USB-C ports on the front. HDMI and Gigabit Ethernet's also still there. And then with the M4 Pro, you get three Thunderbolt 5 ports on the back. So yeah, honestly, Apple's kind of nailed this refresh. I'm very happy with this. Obviously, Apple also goes on about Apple intelligence for those who care about that. Also, this will be the first carbon neutral Mac Apple releases. So if you care about the environment, that's another plus. And overall, guys, I think the base model is going to be terrific value because let me remind you that comes with 16 gigs of RAM as standards. And so I'm going to be recommending many to get that machine. It's a no brainer purchase. Also, the regular Mac mini supports two 6K displays or one 5K display. And the M4 Pro can support three 6K displays at 60 hertz so you're getting the best display support with these machines so those are the 2024 m4 max but of course the m4 rollout won't be done this year so the next model up for release is the macbook air this apparently should stick to a spring release similar to the m3 model this year now much like the macbook pro don't expect this to get any other changes apart from a new chipset Apple seems to be pretty happy with the current form factors, so I don't see them changing the design anytime soon. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Finally, around mid-2025, we should see the M4 Mac Studio, which makes sense considering the M2 model launched at WWDC. And the Mac Pro then releases in the second half of 2024, according to German, which I'm gonna go against, guys. Yes, I should not argue with the tipster god himself, but personally, I see Apple sticking to the WWDC release schedule. And by the time the second half of 2025 begins, I'm sure there's going to be new M5 machines. So they need to be done with the M4 rollout by the summer, in my opinion. Now, I do wonder if we're going to get a new design with the M4 Mac Pro. I really hope they do. But because it's a low volume product, you can argue that Apple doesn't want to spend the R&D developing a new shell for the five people buying this. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And thank you for watching.